people just tend to know that things work in fours and if you can structure your scratches in that format it's going to sound more pleasing to the listener People who improve the fastest are the guys who are pushing themselves and they're practicing over different tempos which they don't really like. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Sai and today we're going to be talking about top scratching fails you should avoid. And these are the ones that I made myself and that I see regularly at scratch jams and just on the internet in general, basically. So no more messing around, let's get into it. The first one is learning too many techniques all at once. And when you first start scratching, you can kind of be like, right, I know how to do that basic technique and I'm going to move on to the next one. And what this kind of leads to is this sort of predictable, not very well executed string of scratches that basically it's just not going to fool anybody. <laughs> At the other end of the spectrum, you've got something that sounds a bit more messy. Either way, you can avoid this by really focusing on the fundamentals from the start. What it's better to focus on is the fundamental scratches. So babies, tears, transformers, chirps, forward scratches. Um, with just those five, the possibilities are literally endless if you know what you're doing. Try to think more in basic musical concepts rather than trying to learn lots of different scratch patterns and techniques. Things like pitching, changing rhythm divisions, pauses, rep rep repetition. Just remember that simple doesn't always necessarily equal easy. There's so much you can do with these basic scratches. As a quick aside here, I've been working on this mind map of scratches. Stick around to the end and I'll tell you how you can get access to it and hopefully it'll help you out. So the next big mistake which people make is not counting bars. Counting bars actually has multiple benefits. It gives a much needed structure to your cuts and a musical familiarity to any listeners. People just tend to know that things work in fours and if you can structure your scratches in that format, it's going to sound more pleasing to the listener. The least you should be trying to do is trying to hit those four bar loops. The next big mistake is not listening to the beat, essentially. One thing I hear a lot of beginner DJs doing is they approach every beat the exact same way. No thoughts given to the rhythm of the beat or even the BPM of the beat. They're essentially just shoehorning the scratches they know over the top of the beat rather than listening to it and trying to work with it or find the little gaps. Basically different beats require different scratches and just pay attention to that. That kind of leads me quite nicely onto my next point, which is getting stuck at one tempo. We all have our favorite tempo, which we're used to and we can feel comfortable on and our scratches sound good at. So it can be tempting to just always put that kind of tempo on and play around with that, but you're really hurting your progress there because the people who improve the fastest are the guys who are pushing themselves and they're practicing over different tempos, which they don't really like. And they're finding the weaknesses in their, in their arsenal and they're like, trying to improve on them by making them their strengths. Just, you know, keep it fresh. Spend the majority of your time practicing over tempos, which you don't actually like. And if you do it enough, you'll probably come to find that you actually do start to like that tempo and you're actually pretty good at it. Now, I would recommend highly selecting beats, which you're like, oh man, I'm whack over this beat. If you're whack over that beat, chances are you should be practicing on that beat. The next big issue that I see a lot of people making is thinking that speed is more important than record control. And I think this one is kind of endemic to the whole community. Doing the pattern slowly until you can get it down, then you speed it up and until you can get it double time over like really fast, you know, 140 BPM beats. And whilst that's not a bad start, it's really just the beginning of learning a scratch. 
you should be practicing the pitching of the scratch. So that's where like the real funk and the definition of that particular scratch is going to come from. Just being able to do it fast doesn't really mean you can articulate yourself with it. So another thing which you should really be working on to really integrate that scratch into your arsenal is transitioning into other scratches with it. So as I say, it's not just enough to know how to do it quickly. You need to know how to bounce into another scratch with it. Not all scratches are going to combine as nicely as you might hope, but it's worth practicing them and not just being like, oh, cool, I've got that down now. I'm going to learn a new technique. Really practice integrating cuts and, and making combos that way. And my last mistake, which I made and which I see a lot of other people making is not practicing their scratches in reverse. So it's pretty common to see people start every phrase going forwards. I did this myself for the longest time and it sounds so obvious, but you see a lot of people doing this and you can learn a lot of scratches by doing it. Like it's not like you're going to completely limit yourself, but you really are leaving a lot on the table by doing this. And you're probably locking yourself into a certain flow, which you're going to get sick of quicker than if you start backwards. Another key scratch to learn, which can help you kind of get used to going between forwards and backwards is the seesaw scratch. So practice that. But honestly, you can pretty much start any scratch backwards if you practice it. You can even start scratches from like maybe a third of the way through the scratch, which is called rotating scratches. But I won't get into that now because it's a whole new topic, but just bear it in mind, don't just start everything from the, the forwards. The last mistake which I and pretty much the whole community makes is only scratching R and fresh. Yeah, I get it. It's like the, the plain sound as Cubit calls it, and that's how you're gonna flex how good you are. And yeah, they sound great. And that's kind of half the problem. They're very forgiving samples, actually. They've got a nice attack and a really long release, so you've got a load of room to fit all your patterns you want to do into it. But we can tend to default to it because it's comfortable. Again, what happens when you get to a vocal sample and each little segment's too short for you to do all these crazy two clickers that you've been learning? You're essentially creating a weakness in your scratching. And again, we don't want that. <laughs> So yeah, practice with different samples early on, jump in with some vocal samples and you're going to save yourself some pain here. But again, I do it myself. It's, uh, it's I don't want to be a hypocrite and say <laughs> that I don't. I know I, I do and everyone does. It's like the whole community relies on those samples and it, just be aware of it, I suppose. So as mentioned before, I've been working on this mind map of scratches. If you want access to it, drop a comment and I'll hook you up with access to it. I'm working on different possibilities so I mean any suggestions would be great because obviously I'm going to always be able to add new scratches in that I've missed but I've tried to keep it to essentially the main core scratches I think they're the scratches that you should be learning and then you just make up your own combos right but that's it for this one please check out the rest of my scratch videos up here and happy new year guys